Hello everybody, Strategic Sage here with another trip into the joys of Factorio. And in this session we're going to turn the page to the final phase of research, the late game science, purple production science packs, and the yellow utility science packs. We're going to see what new items and technologies are going to be available to us, prioritize how we're going to move through those, and then also get some practical look at how we're going to build those in our factory. So as we've seen in the previous tier, there are some that are just upgrades, enhancements to existing technology. We've got breaking force, we've got inserter capacity, lab research speed, the various combat upgrades, improving our robots, etc. Then there are some that I call exotics. That is, they're cool new technologies, but ones that I don't think are too practical to use for your typical run where you're just going to go through and launch a rocket and win the game. If you want to go well beyond that to a mega factory, just want to experiment with some new ideas, then these can be perhaps a little more applicable. I'm talking about effect transmission with the beacons. It really allows you to multiply the impact of modules on your machines by transmitting that effect from a distance. But in order to really fully utilize them, you've got to redesign all of your production lines. And so if you're first coming into this and you haven't designed everything for that in advance, and we have not in this particular run, then you'd effectively have to tear down your factory and rebuild it in the late game if you're really going to make use of that. And not really worth it in my opinion, but we are going to take a look at how this would work for people who are interested in that. Then we also have coal liquefaction. And this essentially turns coal into oil. If for any reason you have an oil shortage, you can't get out to where more oil is. If you have a particularly bad map or you've got enemies that for whatever reason you haven't been able to overcome yet, then this is a possibility there. Another reason is just say you don't like using trains, just not a fan of them or they confuse you or whatever the case may be, then coal is usually going to be by this point more abundant and nearby to your factory. So it can be easier logistically to deal with. Also, we have the steam there as an ingredient, which if you have a situation like we do, we've got a nuclear power plant producing much more steam than it's currently utilizing, well, we can take some of that steam and put it into this coal liquefaction process. But in general, I don't think any of those are particularly great reasons that you need to use coal liquefaction. Our advanced oil processing is gonna serve us just fine, and we are going to be sticking with that. Then we also have some combat upgrades as well. We've got, for example, the portable fusion reactor so we can get power for our armor all day long, or rather all day and all night, not just during the day as we currently have with our portable solar panels. We're going to have new types of combat robots, the destroyer coming in in the late game. We've got a new armor. Artillery are either fixed emplacements or they can be put on trains as well. Extremely powerful long range. This is one of the just crazy powerful items that we're going to potentially have. We're also going to have the Spider-Tron, which is the late game vehicle that just basically could ignore lots of terrain obstacles other than water. And we've got atomic bombs. So there are just some ridiculously powerful items that are going to be available to us there. But the items that I'm really going to be focusing in on prioritizing are, as usual, the more practical, let's improve the operations of our factory. So we'll start with a nice long research, the third tier of mining productivity. Again, improving our resource efficiency, keeping our pollution down, etc. Then we have automation three, and this is a huge upgrade. First of all, we get twice as many modules we can put in these, four instead of the usual two. Then we've got 1.25 crafting speed compared to the 0.75 that we currently have. So that's a two-thirds jump. It's also a one-third reduction in pollution, two per minute instead of three per minute. So even if you don't count in the effect of the additional modules, and there will be an additional effect there, we'll put a third efficiency module in them perhaps, for example, but we're going to get two and a half times the amount of items out for the same amount of pollution using these. Of course, the power increase is there, but again, plenty of power at this stage, so that's not a concern. Then we have Logistics 3, so our final tier of transport belts, undergrounds, and splitters. We have the third tier of modules, so they're going to reach their peak as well. And they're quite expensive, but also extremely powerful, as you might expect. Then we have the logistic system. And so this is going to take our robots to their peak capability with three new kinds of chests. There'll be a total of five now then. 
And it can be kind of complicated how all that interrelates, so we will get to that, but we will really be able to use our robots to do many more things than even they currently are. And we can build entire production lines revolving around robots then at that point and not even worry with transport belts, if that's something that we decide that we're going to want to do. And then, of course, we have our ultimate goal, the rocket silo that will eventually be able to research. Notice the ingredients here for the rocket parts. Rocket fuel, we can already make that. Low density structure, we recently learned how to make that. Rocket control units, well, those are right here, and we could research these now if we wanted. And again, we're already building processing units and modules. So we just need to research the technology. We have all of the basic components in place. So from here, we can really smell the end of the game. It's close, but we've got a little bit more to go to get there. Here is our final science pack production area for the factory. And even though it's the more expensive one, we're starting off closer down here to the south with the yellow utility science packs. And the reason for that is I have a couple items for it just coming right up the shoulder here. We've got the low density structures, and this is for the flying robot frames. And then of course, the processing units coming in off the bus, just dripping in at the moment. And I've got productivity modules here because if we're gonna use those on the processing units, it stands to reason we want to use it on products that require processing units. So not a great number of these, but they're pretty expensive items, particularly the processing units and the low density structures. Then we have the final one, the purple production science packs. And these are basically just a bunch of rails. Also one electric furnace and one productivity module for each trio, but mostly a lot of rails so not hugely expensive in terms of these here and the rails aren't expensive either we're just building them in high volume notice I've got my stone chest here so that as I have extra this will get gradually used up we've accumulated as you can see we've got a thousand of it in there quite a bit over the course of the game but we will get rid of it and of course this is another use of steel so steel this is the end of the line by the way for stone and for stone bricks so if you were really planning ahead from the beginning of the game, you could stop these items way down further and just set up a science pack production area for the late game further down on the bus. But this will work just fine for us. And once again, we are just looping our way around to allow lots of extra room if we might choose to expand. There's no real reason to worry about using a little bit of extra transport belt there. So that is our late game science sort of preview and setup. And as mentioned, we're going to really be focusing in now on dealing with the resource shortage. That's going to be a big theme of the late game. And we'll get into some thoughts on that starting up next. Thanks for watching everyone.